and the previous two days, we've afforded our panelists, our investors, um, with recognition and loud applause for the wonderful work that they've done. We see our relationship with you um, as media colleagues really as a partnership. So I think it's our turn um, as a team to acknowledge you and to say a very big thank you to you. So at this point, if you're not a professional member of the media corps or communication, could we just give our wonderful colleagues a warm round of applause for the wonderful work that we've done. This has truly been a historic and incredibly important experience, particularly in the history of investment and development in Africa. As we've all heard, we've never seen the likes of this before. And right with us on the panel here today are champions of industry and finance on the continent who have helped make it happen. With us today is President of the African Development Bank, Dr. Akimumi Adishina, Premier of Houting, Honorable David Makura. I don't believe he's, he's coming yet, but we are expecting him, Honorable Tito Taiwas, Titus Mboweni, Minister of Finance, South Africa, Patrick Lamini, CEO of Development Bank of Southern Africa, Professor Be Benedict Orama, President of African Export Import Bank, Admasu Tedese, President Trade and Development Bank, Alain Ebibose, CEO, Africa 50. Um, again, thank you very much for joining us. Um, I'm going to hand over proceedings very quickly in the interest of time to our colleagues. You've heard a lot, we've seen a lot, and this is one last opportunity for you to ask those questions that you feel have been answered up until this point, or if there's a need for clarification. So. Um, we'll move on to question number two, since as I tend to say, nobody likes to ask question number one. We just make things easy around here. So question number two, um, as a matter of protocol, kindly mention your name and the organization that we represent. And please, if you are not a member of the press or of the media, um, kindly refrain from asking any questions at this point. This is strictly a media and press affair. So ladies and gentlemen, over to you for your questions. Well, that's a quick press conference. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, Fifi from CNBC Africa. Uh, Fifi from CNBC Africa, could you uh, give us an idea of the total uh, number of deals that have Um, that have been made or, or commitments that have been made at, at the, the forum and the value of these deals and also shed light in which sectors predominantly the, the capital has flown to. Thank you. Okay, question number one. Seema. I repeat, okay. Uh, yeah. Massimo Zaurini, Africa, Far Info oh. Africa. Mm. One, One question. question is, I repeat the same question I did at the opening press conference. So if now that you have numbers of these three days, if you are happy with, uh, with these numbers and for the target that you, you had before starting. And the second thing is just to thank you because it was, a, okay, you know, you are helping me very much because uh, my work is to try to change the narrative in the continent. So. <coughs> Tell what I've seen in these three days is a really helped me. So I have to thank you for this. Thank you. And um, we'll go to um, Ethiopia, right over here. Um, hi, my name is Tamrat, and I am a business editor from Addis Ababa. Uh, listening to many of the panels and discussions and everything over the last three days, uh, it feels like that uh, political risk and conflict in Africa, governance issues, uh, have completely um, relegated or not given proper attention. While it is still a, co a continent where there are too many conflicts going on between countries, within countries and all that. What does this say about it? Does it mean that you guys feel like Africa have finally overcome political issues as risk for investment? Thank you. All right, thank you very much. We'll lead off with these three questions and then we'll come back to, um, uh, to you. 
I hand over to the panel. Um, Mr. President, would you like to lead? Yes. Well, thank you very much. Let me, let me first uh, start out by saying the most important thing for Africa is how Africa is projected. It's the image that Africa is given. It's the news that comes out of Africa and how the world sees Africa. That's the most important thing because perception matters. What we've done in this forum, as you see all of us here, it's not the deals that we were the most concerned about. It's the narrative on Africa's investment. The narrative that Africa is ready for investments, Africa absorbs investments, and African leading financial institutions are putting their full financial weight behind investments to come onto the African continent. This is the first time that you've seen this on this continent. And that's a mark of confidence that we have on our own continent. I want to repeat it again. It's about delivering as one. That's what we are doing for Africa here. So I said that to thank you, the media, first. Because for the rest of us, we've been in boardrooms. We've had conversations. But it's you that's actually been looking at the stories reporting the stories as real time. And I want to say that as we proceed with this work, the media is not a reporter. The media is going to be a strategic partner for us as we engage on this new narrative for Africa's investments. So I just wanted that to be clear, that there is no us here and you on that side. We're going to be on the one single thing marketing Africa, branding Africa, being realistic about challenges that we have, but being focused on how we convey messages about Africa. So I want to thank you, the media, for your massive presence here, for your interest, for your engagement with us. So I want us to thank you because I, I, I don't take that for granted. Let me take the first question from Fifi. And by the way, let me thank CNBC Africa for being a big promoter for us on this Africa Investment Forum. Your chairman, uh, Mr. Rakesh, has been fantastic. The teams at Forbes Africa, the teams on CNBC Africa, I want to say thank you very much for your support. Your question, Fifi, was in terms of number of deals. We in the boardroom conversations, sometimes I'll give you the numbers, but it's what goes on in there that actually matters than the numbers. You have boardroom conversations wherein the presidents are involved. They are not giving speeches. They're actually involved in transactions. You look at the case of Ghana, which was looking at cocoa board investment, and also looking at the sky um, Skyline, uh, 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 Skytrain. Skytrain investment. And President Akufo, Nana Akufo Ado was there. You know, he's a lawyer. And so he was involved in all his transactions and so on. That's the kind of Africa that you're beginning to see differently. A big part of the success that we report here is because our leaders are thinking differently and acting differently. There are 45 deals that were discussed, negotiated, and closed throughout these transactions, I mean, throughout these uh, boardrooms that we have. And as you heard, pe people's expectations were exceeded massively. And those 35, uh, 45 deals were valued at 32 billion US dollars. That is incredible. Um, so that's just about that. When you talk about the sectors, the sectors are largely on infrastructure. Energy is a big one there. Uh, transport, utilities are big parts of that. Agriculture uh, are a big part of that. There are projects on water and sanitation. 
that are going to really help to transform the lives of our people. And of course you had agriculture, which <coughs> it's, it's very uh, uh, important for us. And there's also housing projects that were also part of that, and financial services, obviously. The thing I want to say about <coughs> Maximo's point on whether I am happy, I couldn't be happier. I couldn't be happier because when we started off, you know, when I was in school, if you, they gave you a pass mark if you go 50%. And those of us that wanted to work so hard, work so hard so you could get 70%, if you got 70%, you were given an A. We put into the boardrooms $40 billion worth of transactions. You close $32 billion of transactions. Now, I don't know if my math is still working as much, but that's 80%. Huh? That, that, uh, th that's 80%. Uh, that is A+. Plus. <laughs> so I'm happy. <laughs> I'll take the last one. I'll give it to all the rest of you to answer the question. But I just want to say something about the issue of conflict. We're not ignoring that. I will let him talk about his project that he's leading with us on between Congo and uh, two, Congos. two Congos and relating it to how the investments can build resilience. So you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, and indeed, um, when we look at uh, those projects, we are not uh, ignoring the risk. Um, what we do, uh, we structure those projects, we allocate the risk to the, the parties, which is the best able to manage those risks, and we are also de-risking some of those projects through some instruments like the partial risk guarantee instrument that the African Development Bank can provide to make sure that some of the risks that the market cannot take will be mitigated through those instruments. But we can also say that today the perceived risk is much higher than the, than the actual risk. And changing the narrative, what this African Investment Forum is doing, changing that narrative, is gonna reduce the gap between the perceived risk and the actual risk. And that's what's gonna trigger a massive amount of investment coming through. And uh, we f fundamentally believe that. This is important, is, this, uh, this forum is important in so many ways. And beyond the deals that are closed, and I, just totally uh, agree with what the president said. Um, you know, I've seen how investments are made in other emerging markets in Latin America. And now we are proving that there is no difference between these other emerging markets in terms of structuring the projects, attracting those investments. So we would substantially increase the volume of private investment that comes into our continent. And we believe that. I think that uh, on the same issue, um, if uh, we can have, uh, uh, where's, where's Urama, I think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Urama, yeah. yeah. Just, yeah. No, 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 just, uh, just in terms of your general view of the thing and also how I would say you can speak about how some of the transactions that you are doing are also going to help to, uh, to reduce fragility and, and some of the issues that cause conflict and stuff like that. Thank you very much, Mr. President. <clears throat> uh, I think I have to say uh, something generally as uh, the, uh, the takeaway. I said that President Deschino and his uh, colleagues have built an open source platform. And like all open source platforms, we are going to have a very, very large pool of projects, a very, very large pool of investors before long. We are going to see the good, the bad, and the ugly. And it is important that we see all of those. Because by doing that, the very bad will see what it, what it takes for the very good to get 
financing, and then they will start moving from being very bad to being very good. So that is one thing that I think is very, very, very resounding about what is happening here. And from the, um, the so the transactions we discussed here, for us, we had 60 meetings here. We didn't expect to hold up to 10 meetings. We had 60. And we had serious discussions that were going to progress for transactions amounting to $15 billion. In fact, I was battling because some of the, um, the sessions I was supposed to be in, I couldn't be because I had to be in these other meetings. So $15 billion, and as I was saying earlier in the panel, I don't think it was even possible for us to originate $15 billion worth of deals in three months, not a talk of two days. And these are transactions that are well prepared. And these are the transactions that speak to the kind of things we are looking for. Um, transactions that have intra-regional content. Uh, transactions that help to reduce the constraints to uh, production within the continent of Africa. Transactions that helps us to drive our strategic initiative of promoting export manufacturing. So I, um, and I'm sure my other, co other colleagues will confirm this because we, 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 we discussed uh, along the corridor. We think that next year we are going to have a huge, huge crowd. I don't know where we're, uh, the presentation will hold it because we had some people who are peeping to know what's going on. <laughs> uh, uh, now they will convert from peepers to active participants. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so, yes, it is. So, well, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Admasu. Well, I, I just thought I would, I would reflect, um, you know, how we've seen it. I, 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 I think we've all heard that this is not just an event, it's a forum, it's a, it's a platform. And I think as you've heard Minister Mboweni mention, it's, it's, it's serious conversations that lead to investment decisions. We all know that investment decisions are not made on the sidelines of conferences. They're made in boardrooms. But, but this forum actually feeds that process of taking the proposals to boardrooms where the actual decisions get made. We closed a number of deals, and what was so interesting for us is we closed not just transactions with clients, we actually signed some strategic partnerships where some new, new institutions became shareholders of my own bank. So when we talk about scaling up, I can only scale up to the extent that I have my own firepower, my own financial capabilities. So I was very pleased to have in this particular room day ago, uh, sign a new strategic partnership, and now I'm calling that entity my new shareholder. That's just one. We also signed with an American entity that uh, holds a lot of promise to give us long-term funding to do things that we need that kind of capital for, and this was also a first for us. But more importantly, I think um, for us, we've had um, so many bilateral conversations with existing clients, with new clients, and also with, with partners who want to do more with us. And the beauty of this is, you know, we're all going to meet again next year, but even before next year, we're going to have quarterly meetings in some cases, uh, semi-annual meetings. So really what we've begun to do is build momentum, right? And momentum is, is really what's going to take us to getting the investment levels in our continent up to the levels that we know will generate 6, 7, 8% annual growth across the board. We know Africa's only growing at 3, 4%. The reason we're all pushing so hard is because we are, we we're about at half the level we should be at. That's why there's an urgency to this whole uh, engagement. And we all know that in the end, Africa needs foreign direct investment. As much as we want our own African capital to come in, we know that our savings rates are 16, 17, 18% at most. We can't do what the Chinese can do. They have 40% savings rates. They can finance their own investment. We need our own capital, but we need almost half as much to come from outside. And for the outside world to see us being very serious as Africans, driving the momentum ourselves, showing our own level of seriousness, that inspires confidence. 
the rest of the world cannot invest in Africa if they don't see Africans doing it themselves. Thank you very much. Subaru. Thank you. So I would like to start by telling you about my experience on this forum. So um, we got a, an email from a, a participant that said they wanted to meet with us. They wanted to share their aspirations, and they wanted us to work together. So we came into this forum, and we have agreed to do three transactions together with them. Those three transactions are worth over a billion dollars. More importantly, we find in them a partnership to do business across Africa together. Because our mission is to reduce the infrastructure deficit on the continent. Transport and logistics is very key to that. And we have found in them a partner to be able to do that. Very important. We've also met additional investors that have agreed to invest alongside us to do business on the continent. That was our objective, and we've already met that. We have also, um, we're having discussions with um, some investors from Europe, and they said they were going to be in the forum. We've met in this forum. We've agreed to do business together. Um, we have a particular transaction that was of interest for them. We are going to invest uh, $100 million. They said they are going to invest the same amount of money together with us, and we've agreed to work together. Um, so I would like to address one of the questions uh, raised about political risk and the risking. So like you said, Africa has not changed. However, perception of African risk has changed. Why? Because in our institutions, in the framework in which we are set up, are the risking mechanisms that we bring together or we bring to bear on projects. So participating in projects reduces the risk of those projects. We have also learned how to increase additional credit enhancement wraps. That reduces risks. In this forum also, we've had very positive discussions with decision makers on how to further the risk projects. We have given them ideas, we have given them alternatives, and they've listened, and they've accepted that. That wouldn't have happened ordinarily. You will have men traveling to, to Kigali, you will have men traveling to Abidjan, you will have men traveling probably to Luxembourg um, to try and reach that agreement. But in this forum, we're all able to sit together and reach an agreement. That, I think, is a very powerful tool. That, I think, is the future of how we're going to work together. We have also agreed amongst us partners that we are going to have a framework through which we appraise and diligence pro uh, projects so that we can do things faster and we can scale up faster. Thank you to Dr. Adishina and his team for putting us together. Thank you to all our partners for the commitment to do this and for the commitment to continue to do this. Thank you. Thanks. I just want to add something to what uh, the president just said uh, about to your question about the risk of the of the political. You know, one of the countries in which there was a lot of investments in at uh, this meeting was Guinea. And don't forget, Guinea was a, a very fragile state, and it's recovered. Uh, the African Development Bank has a facility which um, is called the private sector facility, um, which allows us to de risk investments in fragile states, in areas where you have political risk and stuff like that. Look, other institutions may not want to invest in fragile states in Africa, but as president of African Development Bank, I can't run away from Africa. I'm president of, the, of, of African Development Bank. Our job is to make sure that the economies are resilient. We stay with them, you know? We're not a flash in the pan. And so the private sector facility it's about, it started with $250 million. We have another $250 million, it's $500 million. It allows us to invest, you know, three times, you know, uh, 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 $1.5 million in, in, in places that nobody will ever invest in. And I can tell you this, to the point of the risk perception that has been raised by my colleague here, our non-performing loans are so low. For us as African Development Bank, once our board approves our location to reserves after all the money we've made. 75% of our investment are going into low-income countries and fragile states. For us, our capital as a bank leverages investment into low-income countries and fragile states 17 times. So I just want to give you that confidence that we 
You know, we, we aren't going anywhere, you know, our, our job. And we have one of our partners here that is the Africa Trade Insurance. Um, you know, I, I thought they were uh, going to be around, but they are doing a great job. Over there with Afri Exim, we invested in Afri Exim. They are doing a fantastic job at Afri Exim with regard to, you know, risk, trade risk mitigation. Uh, we invested, I don't know how much we put in, about... About 450 million. Yeah? Yeah, about $450 million into his bank um, to help to deal with the issue of trade uh, 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 risk and so on. So we are working together uh, to, to uh, uh, really do risk this. But I just want to, to, to say something that uh, uh, was said by uh, Sibiru, President Sibiru, and I think it's a good quote. It says, partnerships to do business across Africa together. That's what you have uh, right here. So let's come back now to South Africa. So I'm going to give the floor to uh, Dlamini, uh, president of DBSA, then we come back to the premier. Thank you very much, President Sina. It's quite actually heartwarming to see what actually we've witnessed here over the past two and a half days. It's a start that says if you start with 80% achievement, can you imagine the next five years? Think about the next year. What is it going to be? Mr. Uh, Dr. Orama was talking about people who were peeping in, trying to see what's happening. Think about when those peepers actually begin to participate. Because the message is very loud in terms of what we mean as a coalition of DFIs on this continent, really making sure that and acknowledging that we still have a very long way to go. Because think about where we are as a continent and think about where we need to be. It says, with this start, African people have every reason to be helpful for the future. But think about also the, the 100 billion US dollar target for the President of the Republic of South Africa Mr. Premier, watch the space over the next 12 months, two years. <clears throat> Given the pipeline that we have as a Development Bank of Southern Africa, the President of the Republic of South Africa is going to exceed that target. Come talk to me in the next 12 months. Effectively, in the next African Investment Forum, I will be able actually to tell you how beautiful the story has become and how beautiful the narrative of the African continent, Massimo, is going to be that for the first time in the history of this continent, you are seeing DFIs and multilateral development banks taking charge of the economic challenges of this continent, making things happen, broadly broadcasting their presence and their intention in terms of the future that has got to be achieved. We want to make sure that the foreign investors coming in with DFI come in knowing that we have demonstrated the confidence that we're seeing on the ground. And if we're to think that actually conflicts and political issues are an issue, we are not saying it's perfect. We're still somewhat far. But what we're saying to also to our political principles is that do your part. We are ready to do ours as, as, as banks to make sure that this continent succeeds and is on its way to prosperity. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much on the way to prosperity. Uh, on the way to prosperity, I think this Africa Investment Forum uh, brings something quite significant to South Africa. Uh, I did say that South Johannesburg, you know, Harting President, uh, uh, and in particular, it's open for business and business has come to uh, uh, at Johannesburg. Uh, the Premier will now talk to us about what South Africa is getting from this Africa Investment Forum. Mr. Premier. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Uh, <clears throat> we put uh, on the, on the uh, project book of this uh, Africa Investment Forum seven projects. There were seven South African projects worth $7.2 billion, and we have uh, six of those projects worth $6.8 billion, 
at the financial close. So, uh, Mr. President, if you look at, uh, uh, this should be a very bright student. Uh, uh, six out, out of seven. 97. And, uh, That's 97%. <laughs> six, so 6.8. My expectation was that we should get something like $5 billion uh, to contribute to the president's target of $100 billion. Uh, so we have added two weeks ago, the president raised $20 billion at a conference here. So we have added uh, out of this $6.8 billion. So Mr. Damini is right. <laughs> Mr. Damini is right that the president is going to meet his target much faster. Um, in fact, with the, with, the, with the whole notion that the forum is not next year, it's not waiting for next year. Uh, I think we've got a, a very good sense of, as South Africa, we have many infrastructure projects. Myself, Minister Lamini Zuma and Minister Mboweni were speaking about how many projects we have which are sitting essentially on a queue to the Minister of Finance for financing. And now we were saying we wish the whole of cabinet was here because he would be smiling. <laughs> he would have no minister queuing there uh, looking for money. So we're going to work. Uh, we have a very good sense of what those projects are. We're going to work. They will get onto the pipeline immediately. I just want to share with you some of the projects. One of them, the big one, was the Khao Train expansion. You, you had, uh, that's one project worth $3.9 billion. We're very happy that they, there, was a, there was a stampede, actually. <laughs> there was a stampede around of investors. Imagine investors in a stampede. All of them <laughs> wanted the how train to finance the how train. So the appetite was huge. Uh, we also had... Uh, we had put as the Gauteng government a project, a public-private partnership project about the, uh, the build program for our schools. Uh, that project was worth $240 million. Again, it was, there were many, many investors who wanted to, to go there, so it's, it's, it, it, says it has attracted a lot of uh, interest. We also have, had put on the table a big project, which is about uh, the gov government accommodation, uh, the renovation of government buildings, which, uh, which is about uh, five, $492 million. It's also oversubscribed, so that, that's one, one of those projects. There, were, there was also a project from a, a province for a city Waste to Energy Project, that's a renewable energy project, which is also, uh, there, were, there, were, there were much more investors there. So, uh, Mr. President, if, if, you, if, you are, you, if you are very happy, I am quite elated that you have also contributed to the President of South Africa's investment drive. So the African Development Bank has contributed to South Africa's investment drive. That makes us very, very happy. I, as a governor of a province, you know, I, I was worried, will there be something that will come out of here for my country? <laughs> um, you know, when I leave here, will the minister say, hey, you, you know, this thing was just big fanfare and nothing came out? I was worried. I am very pleased. <laughs> I am very pleased with the, the 6.8 billion rents. Uh, it's something very, very pleasing. And uh, Mr. President, I'm, I know that you will, if, if you were to decide that you are coming back um, to Johannesburg, when you decide, just know that we will be uh, more than ready to host again. <laughs> you know, and thank you very much. Th thank you. Before we take uh, one more two questions, I want to... Uh, 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 Mr. Bobby said to say one word. He wants to say something about, because you are talking about the, the um, auto deals, because the event doesn't close today. The, the work continues. So uh, please go ahead. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this is so important. Uh, 
And we've mentioned that uh, at various occasions, but let's emphasize the fact that uh, this is not an end game. Um, the Africa Investment Forum, it's a platform that will enable ongoing deep discussions to move this project forward. We achieve project milestones here at the Africa Investment Forum, but the ultimate goal is to get to financial close and those conversations, those negotiations will continue. And I have to say that the sense of urgency that we should all have to get to financial close would partially be driven by the fact that next year we will be here and we hope that uh, we can actually achieve additional mi milestones and possibly even achieve financial close uh, faster because of this instrument. I also like to say that uh, as Africa 50, one of our core uh, strategic targets is the project preparation, project development. These activities that are required to build up the pipeline of bankable project, to make project bankable. This is risky stuff, but with Africa Investment Forum, we are a bit more confident to spend early stage capital because we know if we get to a bankable project, we can come here and investors will fight like the Premier was, say, was saying, we'll fight to get a piece of those projects that we prepare well. So for us, Africa 50, that will help our business project dev development business because we know we have an exit potential which is enhanced with the Africa Investment Forum. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much, uh, members of the panel. We <laughs> I, I think we're also oversubscribed with our questions at this <laughs> point. Um, uh, for reasons of time, we're going to um, just limit the questions to three. Um, and those will be our final questions, and then we'll, we'll close. Um, I'll come to Reed first over here. I'll come um, right to my left, and then um, to the lady in the back. So Reed, uh, your question first. Uh, is that? Oh, Omar, did you raise your hand? Okay, again, we, we indeed are oversubscribed, so we'll, we'll, we'll take all four questions back to back. Thank you to my colleague for yielding to me. I'm Tammy Holtman from All Africa. And I have a question about a category of institutions which, as far as I know, are not represented here, and I wonder what the prospects are for them for next time. I'll, I'll give an example. The Kenya Women Finance Trust, Kenya Women Holding, under the leadership of Dr. Jennifer Rerira, had, a, a, over decades, a spectacular record of payback, almost no non-performing loans. And they also had so many examples, the majority of their borrowers <laughs> built from small loans to larger loans to larger loans, creating, starting at micro enterprises, growing to small enterprises, growing to medium sized enterprises. And yet they could not get the financial capital from banks to scale up to do what they could have done. Uh, is this potentially a forum where they can show what they can do and therefore be part of the job creation and economic growth on the continent. Thank you very much. Um, we'll come to Reed, then Omar, and um, to my dear colleague in the back. You've passed, okay, all right. You've punted to Omar. Omar, all right. Hi, Omar Benyet, African Business. So during the uh, dinner that we had with you, uh, with, um, with the media, you also said that this would be a platform for promoters and investors uh, and uh, in, in to interact and interface with the, the public sector. So really, we know that in terms of speeding up deals, the regulatory environment is very important as well to, uh, to accelerate deal flow and deal closure. So what do you think the take-homes of the, uh, the take home of the policymakers will be after this forum? What, what mindset has changed from their perspective and what do they need, what do they need to do differently? Thank you. Right, and our last question to the left. Oh, sorry, I don't see the mic. Sorry. <laughs> Good day. Um, my first question is your, to... Your name, please, and oh, your Oh, sorry. I'm so sorry. My name is Natasha Piri um, from Channel TV. Uh, my first question is for Dr. Adishino. I hope I pronounced that um, correctly. Um, just on a lighter note, on a scale of 1 to 10, how would you actually rate um, this conference? And I mean, just looking at next year, what would you do to improve, um, you know, the forum or the conference? Are we seeing, or will we see more countries actually participating next year? And my second question is for Ndatema Kura. 
um, Premier. So you've been talking about the investment drive. So not so long ago, you hosted, Gauteng hosted the Investment Summit, and now it's this forum. What does this mean for the province in terms of, you know, attracting more investment? Um, will Gauteng be, you know, the next investment, I don't know, uh, province, so to say? Thank right. you. Thank you very much uh, to our panel. I'll start with the uh, present edition. Uh, thank you very much. Let me let me uh, start with the first one and give it to Tadese. It sounds like an exceptional institution. I'm offering to speak to them next week when I'm in Nairobi. So please hook me up. <laughs> there you go. I was pretty quick. <laughs> um, on Umar's, um, uh, on the take home of policymakers, briefly, uh, Premier. Or, or, or Premier, the, 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 the take home on policymakers. Since I have the Minister of Cote d'Ivoire here for agriculture, and you asked the question about what the take home is, Monsieur le Ministre, est-ce que vous pouvez nous dire quelle est votre perspective en ce qui concerne les choses que vous apportez à changer pour profiter en plus You may change to make gains from this investment forum. Please come up to the table to answer. Parce que he's a minister. But unfortunately, I cannot speak in English, but you don't have translate. We do. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. <laughs> Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. President. It is uh, his hallmark to put people on the spot, so to speak. Thank you. This gives me the opportunity, opportunity to speak as a Minister of Agriculture just how interested and how happy or pleased and proud I am of uh, the forum that uh, took place here uh, in the past two or three days. We could never overemphasize the potential of our continent. And as Minister of Agriculture, I can really say this is the case. I knew Adeshina when he was Minister of Agriculture like myself. He did extraordinary things like Minister of Agriculture. And when uh, he came to the helm of the African Development Bank, that was an opportunity for us, uh, Ministers of Agriculture on the continent, to put into effect the commitment made by heads of state in Maputo in 2003 to lay emphasis on agriculture. The question is not to know whether agriculture is going to develop the, in the continent, but rather how to attract investment to, the, to agriculture. And the states did their part, so it was up to the private sector. So this forum aims at reducing the investment gap on the continent, and for us ministers of agriculture, this is very timely because, one, it will help create a conducive environment for the development of the sector because we need to move on to the next step, which is that is of the local processing of our products. To do that, you need energy, you need infrastructure. So I'm quite impressed, and I'm very, very confident. I, I, I've been Minister of Agriculture for about eight years, so you can imagine how many fora for I have participated in. At some of these fora, we just do a lot of talking, but this one was quite concrete. So thank you for giving me this opportunity to say this. Thank you. Uh, thank you um, very much, uh, Minister. I think let me add something from the perspective of my conversation with some heads of state. There was one head of state who told me that Africa Cannot, de cannot develop by begging, and that Africa must develop with pride, and that at this particular forum, it's giving him the confidence that Africa will indeed develop with pride, based on what it has. I think you will find on the panel yesterday, the heads of state and the prime ministers saying they are making reforms in their own countries. 
those, those reforms will continue. You see a very strong commitment to customs administration, a strong commitment to fiscal incentives for private sector. You had the heads of states saying that they are seeing our private sector not as a competitor, but as a private sector as a key partner in growing their economies. And most importantly, is the friendly tone of that conversation that has changed. Private sector, it's the heart of Africa's growth trajectory, and I think the heads of state understand that. It doesn't mean everything is perfect. I was particularly thrilled yesterday when Tony Elimelu raised the question to the minister from Angola when he said that you can invest now in Angola without having to have a, a local partner. And he asked the same thing about Ethiopia, that he wanted to know whether the telecoms, I mean, the, the financial sector was being liberalized in which meant. So I was telling myself, Many people may not understand why Tony Elumelu was asking those questions. He was asking those questions because suddenly he sees policy changes and reforms by government, and he sees an entree <coughs> for the private sector. And that's the kind of thing that I think the message that you're getting from our, 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 our heads of state. But finally, is that African heads of state are making a lot of progress on doing business indices. But we are moving beyond that. <coughs> At the end of the day, it's how you close transactions that matter. Right? You don't, you don't take something and show it to somebody and say, well, you know, my, I've improved 10, 10 points, so you should close this transaction. No. It's the kind of things that we are all talking about here. And that's what we, comf we give the comfort to make sure that those deals can be closed. I want to say um, about the issue of uh, Natasha. Uh, where's Natasha? Yeah, uh, about Natasha. You know, we don't want to self-congratulate ourselves. Um, I think the responsibility that lies on our shoulder is so, is so huge. This is only just the beginning of that. We have to close a gap of between 68 to $108 billion a year. This is a marathon. This is not a sprint. And so we are very determined to do all that is necessary we can only declare success at the end when that long marathon is done. As excited as we are, we have energy to go to the next step. But it's a marathon. And I'm sure that with all the institutions that we have, with the, with the confidence of African governments, and with institutional investors globally seeing how seriously we take this, I think they know that we'll have all it takes to run that long marathon and get there. This is a serious effort. I said it from the very start. This is not a show and tell. This is building the necessary structure. You don't get to have a 58-story building without having strong foundations. These are the strong foundations for accelerated growth of this continent. And we know we still have Areas we have to improve, but there's very strong commitment that we are in this for the long haul. With that, let me turn it over to Victor Oladipo. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Um, when history is being oh, made... Oh, sorry. I think uh, the uh, Premier would say one thing about Natasha, and then we quickly close. Briefly, Mr. Premier, and then you have to close. Yes. Natasha says, what does this mean for Gauteng? I think, firstly, we are very proud of having hosted... Africa here in Africa. It's, a, it's, a, it's something that we deeply appreciate. Uh, we also have a, a, a grant plan. We want employment. We want to create employment. So we want to increase the level of investment into the Gauteng economy. Uh, Inter-Africa uh, trade is critical, but we also want to contribute to Inter-Africa trade. That's why I was very happy with just w that investment, a South African consortium that is going into Accra to build a public transport system there. So we don't want a one-way uh, situation. It must be two ways. Yes, we want investors into our economy here, but we want s 
South African and Gauteng companies to invest elsewhere in the continent. And this is what has happened at this conference. And I, I, I can only urge our mayors and governors at the level I am that they can do also quite a lot. This, this idea that they must leave everything to national ministers and heads of states, it's something that they should, uh, they should stop self-pity, Mr. President. <laughs> they can do quite a lot. Thank you very much. We can do quite a lot. Mr. Ladoko. Thank you very much, President Adishner. I was just uh, going to mention earlier that sometimes when history is being made, it's very difficult to actually recognize that history is being made because we're in the middle of it. But what has come out of this African Investment Forum is a compelling sense that we do recognize that history, irreversible history, is being made. So as we bring this to a close, let me just in less than 60 seconds bring closure to this press conference and the transactions that we've heard. One, we are being trans realistic about our challenges, but we recognize that perception incredibly matters. Number two, perceived risk is higher than actual risk, and as a result, the narrative on Africa must change. Number three, African financial institutions are putting their collective weight behind investment on the continent in a manner that inspires global confidence and capital. Number four, building momentum and a sense of urgency and thinking and acting differently is already taking place. Number five, serious discussions have been held and are being held with political leaders to move investment decisions and partnerships forward. Number six, 45 transformation, transformative cross-sectoral bankable deals worth $32 billion are done and dusted, and many of them oversubscribed. Number seven, we need to bring our discussions and our partnerships to the next level by going beyond talk to transactions, transactions, transactions. And finally, the collective will here is that we will move forward as one on an innovative, unprecedented, open source African investment forum that forever will change the, our collective destinies as Africans and as a continent. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, you've been absolutely amazing. We appreciate the coverage that you provided this Africa Investment Forum. We cannot thank you enough. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful evening. And to our wonderful panel, if you could kindly give them a round of applause, we'd greatly appreciate that. Thank you very much. God bless and have a great day.